Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Before you remove the brake caliper and brake pads, make sure you disconnect the negative battery terminal. There is a, an electric brake uh, controller that uh, if the door is opened, the driver's door, or even if you accidentally touch the brake pedal, uh, it will activate the braking system and potentially you could have the uh, piston uh, come out of the caliper if you've got this disconnected. So you just wanna make sure that the negative terminal of the 12 volt battery is disconnected and put aside before you touch the brake system. You need to pop the hubcap off. You can use a large flat bladed screwdriver or a small pry bar. Just kind of work it under the edge of the hubcap. Should pop right off. You use the 21 millimeter deep socket and a large breaker bar. You loosen the lug nuts of the vehicle on the ground so the wheel doesn't spin on you. So make it a lot easier to take them off once it's up on uh, jack stands. You can raise and support the vehicle. You can do this with the jack and jack stands. We're gonna use our two post lift. Finish removing the lug nuts using the socket. Put the wheel and tire aside. Just gonna hold on to the wheel because it wants to fall off once I get this lug nut loose. wheel and tire off, put it aside. Before you can remove the caliper, you need to unhook the parking brake cable. I'll just spray a little bit of rust printer turn on here. We'll just help it slide apart. Take some needle nose pliers, grab onto the cable, and at the same time, I'm gonna try to pull it up and out. Kind of just popping it out of this little seat where it's sitting. There it is. Pull the cable down and out. So the parking brake cable will just sit like that. You need to remove the parking brake cable from the bracket that's mounted to the rear brake caliper. It has a one way clip on it. I'm going to spray some rust penetrant on here. Take the box end part of a 14 millimeter wrench, or slide it over the cable. You go down, it's gonna push the clip together. You might have to go in a little bit, if you can. And then it's gonna pull the cable out. All right. Now I can slide cable out of the bracket. We'll let it hang there. Now I can remove the lower and upper caliper slide pin bolts. They are 14 millimeter. Use the closed end of the wrench. Loosen them up. Same for the top one. Spin them out by hand. Then slide the caliper off. You can't pre-compress the caliper because it does have the parking brake assembly in it and it will have to be spun back into the caliper to retract it afterwards. So we'll put this aside and it will actually just sit right here on the suspension. You can pop the brake pads out, push them apart. Now loosen the lower and upper bracket mounting bolts. So these are 14 millimeter. Break these free. Get the in there really tight. Use a 14 millimeter socket and a long ratchet to get some leverage on these. Get that one loosened. We'll loosen the other one.
So you got to loosen up, loosen them by hand. I'll hold on to the bracket so it doesn't fall. Put that aside. And this rotor, it's already pretty loose. If it wasn't, you could spray some rust penetrant along here and then insert some eight millimeter bolts and push this off, but it's gonna come free and come right off of there. Put a bungee cord around the caliper just to hold it in place. ABS wheel speeds connector is underneath, is underneath this gray plastic which is sort of a protective cover. Now you should be able to put a screwdriver in here and pop it off, small flat bladed screwdriver. If you can't push the connector in, because it is under this gray plastic, you can gently pry it apart, just like that, and pry this open and pull the cover off, but be careful because the wires are, are through it, but they'll unclip. And then you'll have better access to the connector that's underneath. You can actually see it. And the connector is on the bottom here. It'll have to be pushed up. And it's kind of filled with dirt. It doesn't really want to move. It'll have to be pushed up and then pulled off. So what you can use is some uh, water displacement oil. And it's not going to hurt anything, but it will help make the connector come apart a little easier because they do get filled up with dirt. So then I'm going to reach under here and use the screwdriver to pry or push up on the lock because it takes a lot of force. I probably can't do it with my fingers. Try to pull on the connector, not the wires, and then I got it apart. And don't worry about the oil, it's not going to hurt anything. There are four bolts holding in the wheel bearing. There's two on the bottom and two on the top. You have to spin the hub. So you can have access to them. Before I try to remove them though, I can see some of the threads from the back. So I'm gonna spray some rust penetrant. There's two here and this one's a little further in and this one's over here. I'm gonna use a 14 millimeter socket, a short extension and a long ratchet. We'll go through the opening in the hub, get this on here. One's free. We'll get lined up on this one. Spray some rust penetrant in here. Finish removing the bolts. Got one of the bolts out. It is rusted in place, it should be bolt in, but the wheel bearing is steel going into the steel uh, axle beam. So it's kind of seized in place. So I'm gonna try to tap it, see if it'll come free. I'm gonna try to spray some rust penetrant with the holes here, try to get it behind. I'm gonna try to get under here with a pry bar and a hammer and just try to separate these. So I'm just trying to work on both sides to get it to come out evenly. Here is our original hub and bearing assembly we pulled from our vehicle. It has an integrated speed sensor for the ABS. This is the brand new one from 1A Auto. Same exact style, same setup. There we go, it's now mounted the same way. So same style mounting holes, same style connector, and integrated ABS wheel speed sensor. This will work great and fit great in your vehicle.
I'm gonna use a wire brush and clean up this bore as best I can, the rust that's in there. The new one slides into place. Knock some of the rust off of the surface here. Wipe it down. Doesn't have to be perfect, but any of the loose stuff getting that off of there will definitely help. I'm gonna take some white grease and just put it on the inside of this bore. It'll just help the wheel bearing slide into place. It's not gonna do anything else, like it'll, it won't interfere with anything, so. Just use some white grease. And what it was stuck on was this was rusted to the metal of this. These are all, both steel, so they rusted together. And then this flange sits on the outside. Of course, don't forget your dust shield. This one's a little banged up, it's rusty. Uh, one of the holes is broken, obviously, where I, I knocked the hub off, but that's okay because the uh, wheel bearing and hub assembly will hold it in place. The wider bolts, or the wider bolt holes, will go to the top, the narrow ones towards the bottom. So we'll get it in place. To adjust this, Let's see the holes line up. Install one of the bolts. Get it threaded in my hand. Install the other bolts. I have to line them up. Dust shield is just thin sheet metal. Once I've got the wheel bearing in place and torqued, you can readjust the dust shield so it doesn't touch the rotor or anything and make noise. Just gonna snug these up. Just gonna go across. Uh, and pull these down evenly. This uh, hub and wheel bearing assembly doesn't fit super tightly into the uh, axle beam, which is fine, but if it fit really tightly on yours, you'd want to just draw it in nice and evenly. Usually just doing two bolts for right now is fine. Get them sort of tight, come back and torque them. torque the wheel bearing bolts to 66 foot, 66 foot pounds. Once it clicks, you're all set. I'll do them in a cross pattern just so they go evenly. Wheel bearing is installed. So I'll plug the connector back in. It's keyed, it will only go on one way, but the lock does go towards the bottom. Click when it locks in place. I'm gonna reinstall this gray cover. So the wire did clip into here, the rubber part. So it's clipped in like that. And then we'll push the gray over the connector. So that sat like that. Oops. And then push this over. Get that wire back in there. And that clipped together, just like that. Here's the original brake rotor and pads we pulled from our vehicle. Here's the brand new ones from oneauto.com. Same exact style, solid rear disc, same style pads. These particular ones come with new hardware. This will work great and fit great in your vehicle. So inside your brake caliper bracket sits your pad hardware. These are stainless. If you need to, you can reuse them. Use some brake parts cleaner and a wire brush and you can clean them up. These have little tabs, so I'm going in one direction. Do the same for both sides. Then you can clean them up with a rag They'll work just as good as new for you. If you have replacement ones, you can take a flat bladed screwdriver, just pop them out. I'm gonna pop these out because I do have replacement ones. 
and you'll want to clean where they sit. So again, brake parts cleaner, wire brush, knock off some of the loose rust. The same for both sides. Install the new hardware, push them into place. This one's got a little bent, just bend it back. Next, you can check uh, to make sure your sliders are moving nice and freely. This one's moving pretty freely. Uh, this one's really stiff. So if that hardware comes out, that's okay. I'm gonna put that aside for now. I'm gonna use the 17 millimeter wrench to try to turn it. Get it to move freely. Try to pull it out. Carefully pry back the boot. Once it's out of the boot, Just trying to work it out of the caliper, out of the caliper bracket. I'm going to put one of the caliper slide bolts in here. Give me a little extra place to grab onto. Let's get this hardware out. So this slide pin you can see is really dry. It's corroded. This should be really smooth. Nice looking metal with some grease on it. This needs to be serviced because it didn't want to move. This one moves really nicely. Usually the ones at the rubber end move a little bit slower, but they will move. And this one didn't want to move at all. It's very difficult to get out. I'm going to clean it with some brake parts cleaner. Try to brush off some of the buildup. case you'll have to replace this caliper or at least the slide pin bolts. Use a scarring pad. Brake parts cleaner. a lot better. I'm just going to clean inside where that slide pin went with some brake parts cleaner. Some brake caliper grease. Grease up this slide pin. Push it back in. So now you can see it moves nice and freely in and out. Make sure this one moves, but I am also gonna lube this one up. So you can see this one came out. This also had a rubber stopper on it. Sometimes only one of them will have that. This one had both. But you can see how this has grease on it. That's why it was moving nice and freely. Just clean off the old grease. I'm not gonna worry about cleaning inside there because it was full of grease. It was moving freely. So I'll just reapply some more to this one. Fresh stuff. Put that back in. 
moves nice and freely now. Much better. Push these clips into place. This is ready to be reinstalled on the car. I'm gonna reinstall the rotor backwards. And just spray it with brake parts cleaner to remove the oil that it shipped in so it doesn't flash rust. You wanna make sure this surface is nice and clean. You don't want any oil or dirt contaminating your new brake pads. So I'll just touch the edges and flip it over. Doesn't matter where this is installed. I'll put one of the lug nuts on here so the rotor doesn't flop around while I'm trying to reinstall the brake caliper bracket. And spray down this surface to get rid of the oil coating. With brake parts cleaner. At this point you can check, so that's not sitting there, you know, now it's sitting nice and flat. It's not touching the dust shield, so it's not going to make any scraping noises. If it was touching, it might make a noise, and you just bend that dust shield away. I reinstall the rear brake caliper bracket, get it lined up in place, put the bolts in my hand, get them threaded in my hand first, you might have to move the bracket around. Same for this one. I torque the caliper mounting bracket bolts to 42 foot pounds. Once it clicks, you're all set. We do both. Just give the brake pads a quick spray of brake clean. You don't need to soak them. Just want to make sure there's no grease or oil on there. Take a little bit of caliper grease and put it on the ears where they'll slide in the uh, caliper hardware. And push them in place. Make sure the wider part of the pad goes towards the outside. Push them in place. Same for the outer pad. So these little return springs were missing when we originally took them off. They do go in here. These little pins right here. They just help keep the pads from rattling. Just sit like that. I'm gonna unhook the caliper. We sort of had it hooked up here. We didn't want it to fall, but hopefully it wasn't. Now, to compress this caliper in, there is a special tool that goes in here to turn it. Uh, I'm just gonna use some needle-nose pliers. It'll take a little longer, but it should work. Just turning it in. Clockwise. So the reason why you have to turn this one in, you can't just push it in. It's because part of it is integrated with the <clears throat> parking brake or emergency brake. And when you pull the emergency brake, it actually ratchets this piston out and holds the uh, brake caliper closed to be used as the emergency brake. I'll just spin this in. like it's right touching the edge of the seal so I think that's as far in as it's gonna go. So I'm just gonna make sure that this faces like that. So with this, oops, I'll make sure I don't loop the hose around. So what's gonna happen, there's a pin here, at the bottom of the pad, the pin's gonna sit in that space here. That's why you have to have this basically up and down vertically. 
to slide it in place. I have to push the caliper slide pins a little bit. That'll sit in place. I'll get the bolt started. I'll get the other bolt started. I'm going to torque the upper and lower caliper slide pin bolts to 25 foot pounds. Once it clicks, you're all set. If it does spin, you can counter hold that with a 17 millimeter. We got lucky these aren't spinning. Torque the top and the bottom. Calipers reinstalled. Now you need to reinstall the parking brake cable, so it's gonna go up through the bracket, through the clip. Come on. There it is. Need to get it up into this bracket here. with some you know those pliers. I'm gonna pull it up and then try to pry it over with my little pry bar. Not quite. Almost there, so I'll pry it over. Kind of a bear, but once it pops in place, it'll lock in and you're all set. We'll take our lug nut off that we had on here to hold the brake rotor in place. Now we can reinstall the wheel and tire. Get it up in place. Try to get them centered as best you can. These lug nuts do have a shoulder on them. The wheel is both hub centric and then lug centric, so the lug holes are a little bit wider. And as you turn these in, they're gonna center themselves. So get them started by hand. Get this one in as far as I can go. And then reinstall the other three, four. Get these all threaded in by hand. And take the socket and just snug them up. And put the vehicle on the ground. Torque the lug nuts. Now torque the lug nuts to 76 foot pounds in a cross pattern. Once it clicks, they're all set. Line up the hole for your valve stem. Push your hub cap into place. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.